of the best curriculum, of the best thinkers in Web3, and help startups who are the very best of their game uh, to get to where they need to go. Uh, I've been doing that uh, because uh, I have a PhD in video game design uh, and help a lot of Web3 games uh, figure out their path forward. Uh, and I've been researching uh, guilds and Web3 games for last six months or so, trying to understand what's going on in play to earn gaming and where there's value being captured. And today I'm going to talk to you a bit about what I've learned. Um, so what is a guild? Guilds aren't new to games. They've been around for a long time. Uh, they're a group of coordinated players. Uh, and because they're coordinated, they can sometimes create value. And that's pretty interesting. And those value they create isn't always for themselves. So like a guild in World of Warcraft creates a lot of value for Blizzard because those players get sticky relationships with each other. Uh, they're able to engage in new and interesting content for themselves. Uh, and what we see here is a concept that, that game scholars call playber. Uh, when players start to actually do work um, to make the IP or the game more valuable for the game maker. Uh, and what Web3 promised as a change um, was to open up the possibility of value capture for players. So we had value creation from the very beginning. Uh, here with tokenomics, we might be able to redistribute some of that value created to what the players are making. Uh, and that was a pretty interesting like concept worth exploring that's been going on now for like three years, I would say. Uh, and what I want to talk about today are the sort of three kinds of uh, guilds and the ways they create, capture, uh, and distribute value. So the first I call guilds that shill. Um, these are guilds that grow player bases. Um, because they grow player bases, they create demand for the assets in there, um, they create a more vibrant community, more players, more good uh, is generally how it works. Uh, and so what happened and why they were incentivized to do this is pretty novel and interesting. Um, you can imagine a game called Axie Infinity. Uh, think of, if you've never played it, a Pokemon game. Uh, and if you get one Axie and you play with it for a sufficiently long amount of time, uh, you can end up with two Axies. And that's kind of interesting because uh, if you paid you know, X dollars for one Axie and you could sell for two X, well, now you're making profit. Um, and that was an interesting idea. The Axies weren't very expensive when things started, but people started thinking, huh, if I can you know, make a little bit of profit, maybe I'm going to play. Uh, and that created demand for axes, right? Because you want to play to get more uh, axes. And then as the demand for axes grew, the price of axes grew, which created more demand for axes. We had this sort of virtuous cycle, uh, which created a real crunch because the ability to create new ones was really tough. And at a certain point, it was costing like, like $3,000 to play this game. That was, that was shocking, right? Uh, and players couldn't afford to play Axie because it was too expensive to get enough Axies. Uh, and so guilds emerged to uh, do some capital alleviation for players. Said, hey, you want to play Axie and make some money? Great, I have some capital for you uh, in the form of like three Axies. I'll lock them up in this way. You play the game and I'll make uh, a cut, 50%, 30%, whatever it is. This is a strange model. It occurred about a, two years ago. Um, and what we had here was basically a Ponzi scheme, right? This is like multi-level marketing at its finest. You buy a case of milkshakes uh, and sell a case of milkshakes. And if you sell enough cases of milkshakes, then you'll be in the green. But you know, at some point, we're running out of milkshake drinkers, uh, and a whole bunch of people are left holding boxes. Uh, and so uh, with Axie, that happened. Um, we had a huge number of players onboarded, like in the millions, but then we like couldn't keep doubling the number of players at the rate we were <laughs> expecting. For, uh, and by we, I mean like, I feel complicit in the Web3 gaming community in that way. Um, and so what ended up happening was a, a total crash in price, and the guilds that were holding these axes for their players were the ones left with exposure to the downward price of their value, which is pretty remarkable, right? So the people who got dumped on were these organizations that raised a lot of capital in the end of the day from venture capitalists. So they're stuck, right? The players aren't so badly off for the most part unless they decide to purchase their own axes. Um, and so there's this euphoria that happened last year, right? A, an immense amount of hope that we are able to bring all of like 
the global south out of poverty through this magical uh, play to earn economics. But if there's no value creation, there's no value capture. And if there's no value capture, there's no value distribution. So we created some value by growing a player base, but that was it. Uh, so um, what ended up happening is those guilds did have an out. Um, these guilds created large player bases that would be directed towards any game they wanted. And all of a sudden they became the most powerful VCs in the gaming space. Because if I'm a new game, my problem is bootstrapping players. If there's no player community, there's no game to do. Uh, so I go to a guild and I say, hey, you have a treasury. Would you like some upside in my game? And in exchange, you'll bring players to my game. My game will become more valuable. Your upside will grow. We'll rinse and repeat. And so you will be able to coordinate players to create new um, you know, opportunities for new IPs to develop. That was very powerful position for guilds to be in, and they still are in this position today, which is part of the reason why I maintain a very large list of guilds to shill my projects to. Um, oh, cool, there's a lot of lights now. <laughs> um, so you can see some here, Yield Guild, Ready Player Dow, Avocado, Merrick Circle, Good Games, there's more, Blackpool, I mean, there's a very long list uh, of guilds that do this. Um, those that weren't overexposed to axes are pretty in the green, and so they're doing so pretty fine. Um, these guilds that shill uh, are ultimately part of the marketing arm now of Web3 Gaming, right? That's the value add that they bring to a game, and that's how they're able to capture value because there's something created. Uh, but there's more than guilds that shill. Um, there's guilds that show. Guilds that show are, and I'm also using Axie here as an example for some aesthetic unity, guilds that build a different kind of value, which is spectacle. So if you're familiar with Web2, games like Dota 2, for instance, there's plenty of spectacle. There's this giant tournament every year called the International. It has like a $40 million prize purse. It's held in a giant stadium. Players from around the world watch it. I pay $15 for the pleasure of having to be able to watch it in-game browser, or not in-game, watch the tournament. Uh, and what happens is I pay money to watch pro players. That money then goes into the prize pool and to the devs. And so we have a sort of sound economic system, value created through spectacle, value captured through tickets, Right, and then the game developers get to share that value with the players. These pro players are playing to earn, right? This promise that we thought Web3 could only do obviously exists in Web2 already. Um, the thought here is that we can maybe get a longer tail. We can start paying players who aren't as elite as the pros of Dota 2 because maybe they can produce enough spectacle themselves in their own ways, whether they're Twitch streaming or just doing small tournaments. We feel that maybe there's a kind of friction reduction that comes from tokens and decentralized finance that you can basically get a, a thicker tail of pros playing your game and build community through that kind of spectacle. So I was lucky enough um, to host an Axie tournament uh, that was funded by FTX as well as Alliance Down and a few other people. Um, and uh, the guilds that were in charge were uh, Huga and Lorcan, which I'd never heard of before, but like are gonna be hosting four more massive Axie tournaments this year. Um, and then the guilds that won were GuildFi and Meditate. And so these are guilds that have not, maybe not as many players as you would imagine, but they have more pro players. And so the value they're creating isn't the same kind of marketing of like player growth for a game IP, but um, this, yeah, this performance, right? This virtuosity that people want to see in playing this game. And this is actually something I wrote my, my master's thesis on was how pro video game players are performers. They, they play a game like you would play a piece of music and an audience is interested to see the creativity players bring when they play those games in the way that musicians might play music. So that's, that's part of what's going on there. Um, okay, and then the last kind of guild I wanna talk about are guilds that ship. Um, these are developer guilds. Uh, and I would have loved to talk about Axie Infinity today and, and keep real nice aesthetic through line through my presentation, but actually it's really hard to build on Axie Infinity right now. Um, the Ronin wallets are like not hard, easy to use. Ronin itself is very centralized. There's uh, free transactions on the chain because like that's how centralized it is for now. They're opening it up, they're building builders programs, they just, you can apply to be a builder now. They're looking for new sinks for their economic model. Um, but uh, it's just like the smart contracts aren't verified, the client isn't open source. So it's just like impossible to build in that space uh, for now. But um, Dark Forest is uh, my favorite Web3 game. 
Uh, it's a fully composable on-chain game on the Gnosis chain. Uh, it looks a lot like Galcon. It's like you have little planets and you attack other planets. And as the more planets you have, the more ships you have, the more planets you can get. Um, and it's like a 4x space strategy game. Uh, and in Dark Forest, the client is open sourced. Uh, the, the contracts are clearly variable and validated and verified. And, and the team wants players to build. Uh, and it's very clear because like, when you start, you're like, oh my god, this is so manual and I have so many moves to make and so little time. I need to script this. So you start building scripts to play it. And then the person who won round 6.2 realized that transactions by the client were being broadcasted uh, serially. And so he just like removed some awaits in the code. And then all the transactions happen in parallel. And so like way more uh, optimization on clients. And so what players are doing in order to win is actually making the game cleaner, better UX, better UI, faster experience. Um, and we're reaching almost this point where games aren't played by humans anymore. Uh, they're played by robots, and players are there just to maintain them um, but as, un, until we figure out ways to stop robots from being able to play. And so in the last patch that was announced like two days ago, robots will have a less of advantage over humans. Um, but anyway, so Dark Forest DAO, this DAO I started uh, when, like last year, just because I wanted to win this game and I didn't have enough time to do it myself. So I just tried to sucker a bunch of people to play for me. Um, they, they built a smart contract that allows players to aggregate all their players together into one meta player on chain. We called it the Astral Colossus. As far as I know, that's the first time a game has been played by a collective through a unifying smart contract. Um, we created a new round for Dark Forest where we asked our community to vote on rules changes. We forked the contracts. We reproduced a whole new version of the game where you could destroy planets for the first time. That was pretty cool. Um, and, you know, we have other competing um, guilds in Dark Forest, like Orden GG, uh, which beats us actually every time because they have way better engineers than us and it's frustrating, but we have better vibes, it's cool. Um, so, uh, these kinds of buildings out of the game, right, we're literally like writing code, more code than the devs ever wrote in some places, right? And that's free labor, so to speak. Um, now, this game has no token. Uh, they're really like trying to delay uh, as much as possible the sort of value capture and the when token and like token number go up part and just keep a vibrant community. But they do hand out NFTs uh, at the end of every round. They hand out NFTs to the players who won and NFTs to the players who built. Um, and those have some kind of market value on speculation and that's fine. And they keep saying like, these are worth nothing. Don't even like think of a price for them. But like, meanwhile, you need $100,000 to buy them. So uh, there is a kind of value capture and reward being done there that's quite interesting. Um, it's fully player based. Like this wasn't a play to earn game until we wrote the marketplace uh, Dark Forest team and some helpers, uh, Dark Forest DAO team and some helpers so that you could trade assets in the game. Like that's really cool, right? Players building in this composable way the way we hoped Ethereum would be. So um, at one point Axie will probably get try to get there and have more composability and these guilds will produce value, and there'll be guilds of builders instead of guilds of pros or instead of guilds of like retail players. Um, so the added two extra ones here, um, Salad and Ancient Eight, these are Axie guilds, but who are building like guild infrastructure. So they're, they're building meta tools and meta things around guilds, and I wanted to mention them um, briefly. Uh, how's my time? Four minutes, great. Um, so the, the possibility space um, is quite large. And what I want to make sure everybody like has as a takeaway from this talk is that if players aren't adding value, if they aren't laboring to create more, then there's no way you can pay them, right? That's just a fundamentally unsound mechanism. Um, and Web3 games got a really bad rap for um, the normal games industry, and there have been lots of these videos critiquing this entire field. Uh, because there's been this like false promise. Like we all forgot how money works. It's like BitConnect all over again in the ICO craze. We're like 4,000% APY forever, I love it. Um, but like obviously that can't happen, right? Um, and so what I'm hoping to see um, grow in this space are more guilds to coordinate more players, to create more value, and to try and find ways to fix what we couldn't fix in Web2. So like when a Skyrim modder creates an entirely new world for players to explore and offers it for free 
and everyone gets to benefit as players and Bethesda sells more copies and that like original player sees nothing, well, that, that makes no sense, right? And that's a clear place where Web3 would, would work. And Bethesda tried to fix that by like offering a couple bucks here and there, but the entire market for that failed because there's, there's no way for Web2 to pay an upside. That's like one of the biggest changes I see. So like Blizzard, Bethesda, whoever, they're not gonna give you stocks. Right? They're not going to give you equity in the company for having built this game yourself. And so your alignment is always like misaligned on that front. And what's awesome about Web3 games is if we do get to governance tokens and we like Axie with AXS, uh, you can start seeing all of a sudden a reward mechanism where players and builders get to capture upside in this asymmetric way. And so I think that's like a really fascinating angle for game developers to think through and, and why we have something worth talking about here in the first place and why we shouldn't just like stick to the Web 2 strategy of building games. Um, so, yep, that's me, uh, Will Robinson. You can follow me at Danger Will Robin. Uh, and uh, if you are building interesting Web 3 games or any interesting Web 3 protocols in DeFi or DAOs, um, we would love to get an application at alliance.xyz from you. Um, we launch cohorts three times a year. Thank you very much. Have a great day.